All right. Hey, um, welcome to the design session here. So my name is uh, Martin Schüle and I'm heading the design in, in Yola. So uh, during this session, I will give you more insights about the design philosophy, what we actually do, how we work, and a couple of tips and tricks how you, how you do really awesome UI design. So it all starts with a basic idea, so-called design philosophy. So we aim at uh, making really complex experiences simpler. Our designs should always be aesthetically pleasant, beautiful and balanced. Our designs should feel natural, so whether it's then a use of flow, material or haptics, so we are outside, so you can hear that clearly. Um, and there should be always some magic, so some kind of uh, positive surprise when using our services or products. Something which gives you maybe just a smile on your face. And last but not least, we aim at designs which are really holistic. So I've never been a friend of splitting designs into just graphic or UI interaction. I, I really would like to design as you will see the product later on and you will see it really as such and holistic. So I believe actually that um, everybody right here is really creative and has lots of ideas and there are lots of ideas out there. And uh, the purpose of myself and, and my team is actually to also to listen and then actually to out of all that with our ideas to, to uh, form a creative direction. So we do the user interface design for Selfish OS. So this means really how you navigate on the, on the product. We do the graphic design. So in the UI, this means the icons or some, some logos, but we do also lots of other graphical design tasks. So the logos, well, we, we have our own uh, fonts. Well, we do also for this kind of events, t-shirts, etc. Then also we work on uh, animation, so-called motion design. So you see that in the UI, how actually certain views appear or, or how some things are being opened. We do also promotional video material if, if needed. And last but not least, we do the industrial design, whether it's then the, the product, we work on that, or, or package designs, or a couple of other accessories. The t-shirts we do also, we are meanwhile quite good. I think I, I have 200 different t-shirt designs, and they're pretty good ones, but unfortunately the printing area is very limited. Otherwise we would have been really awesome, but we are damn good in doing t-shirts. So as you see there, it's a huge variety of things and this is also what I just love actually in, in, in my current position so that I'm not like forced to just one tiny thing. I can actually work on many, many really different things. And as I said, my mission is to bring all these things together so that they have one common uh, like uh, design direction. So how do we actually now work and how do we design now uh, user interfaces for Selfish OS? So we utilize a structured design process. It starts with analyzing, then defining targets and objectives. Then we move further to a, like a creative process where we really concept, we do some prototypes, we evaluate those and we iterate here as long as we are really like satisfied and, and we fulfill our objectives, we make our conclusions. So, but just to make this now a bit more concrete, I thought let's have a look just to one feature which is in Yola C and which, which we did not and which does not work in, in Yola phone. So it's the multi-SIM design. So right from the beginning actually we named this case a multi-SIM, not just dual SIM, just to not being fixed to two SIM cards only, so that the design and implementation is right away a bit more flexible. So we started to uh, analyze actually competitor solutions, it's kind of uh, benchmarking what you do. Um, you really check out other, you use other uh, products, you learn from that. And then also really we, we had a couple of really great people, like uh, one of the core developers who has been constantly traveling between Finland and Russia, for instance, 
and he gave an incredible amount of insights what kind of problems actually he faces with uh, multi-SIM solutions on other phones. And then I had also this case that um, uh, someone who even designs UIs um, has been traveling and he simply didn't really get the settings on an Android uh, dual phone and therefore has been roaming by being abroad and got a rather big phone bill. So there has been tremendous amount of really good insights from the team. And then last but not least, you do not necessarily need to do a sailing trip as we actually did here, but it's good to keep some distance. So to all these kind of competitors and all that, you should keep some kind of mental distance. You should sometimes just step back a bit. You will do much better analysis and also later on much better at your own solutions. And after that, we try to really write down our understanding and define objectives. So, so here, actually, I still remember when I did my first UI designs, almost like, I don't know, more than 20 years ago. Um, I looked at the, at the project and I thought, hey, there are these two views. Uh, there's some option here. Well, I'm done in a few hours. And really, oh boy, I've been just so wrong because I completely underestimated the underlying complexity of this case. So I really did not understand the project or context well enough, nor did I really define my targets clear enough. So what we actually now did in this case, so we simply write down like what, what is actually affected. So this is just a tool like share with all the team and very quickly this list has been growing like it started like yeah there's some setting there and then suddenly you, you notice it. yeah it's actually lock screen status area phone messages here this this it's like big it's a big big project and this kind of writing down the things help you to understand that to also define your targets better to maybe make faces for the development, the design and development into this, so that you can actually really do it at the end of the day. And also what you see in this kind of analysis is that um, there are lots of variables. So just to name a view. So in this case, of course, a user can change SIM settings or mobile settings, but then at the same time, the user can also change his or her location. Then the user can add different SIM cards, put them in, out. Then maybe some of the SIM cards are being detected by the hardware, some are not being detected. Then someone put a SIM card in which was prepaid, but there's no money on it anymore. Then you can disable it also. And there's a lot of options which you have to handle and, and which make this much, much more complex than just like a multi-SIM, which should just work and it's more or less just invisible. So what we did here next and what we normally always do is we go to this concepting phase. So initial sketches, we look into solutions based on the objectives. So and personally what I like a lot is to use uh, first actually simply pen and paper. So it gives me all the freedom. I'm not limited by any tool. So I can just do what, what is just best in this moment. And then also a really great method are the post-it stickers. So you can just use post-it sticker for each like step what the user does and you can build actually user flows very quickly. Then you can just actually reflect those, do they make any sense or not? And if not, you simply change the, you throw the post-it sticker away or you change the order and you can very, very quickly actually build uh, user flows. After that, we actually make the designs more, more concrete, more detailed, so that we get also more detailed actually feedback or, or we find out new, new solutions. And here what, what I normally do is that I have a collection of all the silica components and then I'm just assembling UI views actually so that they look rather, rather real. And I'm using like vector drawing tools for, for doing so. And I always start with the silica components because by that, well, we will offer then the users a consistent way. So if a user has been using then the UI already somewhere else, he can apply this learning also to the new solution. And only if there's really a special case where the silica components and their behavior simply not working 
at all we are thinking about special solutions. So like in this case here, this is the phone application. We, for instance, just looked and we explored where we should show SIM card related information and what kind of format is needed. Do you need to see it really everywhere? But then you would clutter actually the views quite a lot. And we learned that um, it's not really required everywhere, but there should be always a possibility to check which SIM card has been actually used. And then when we did this kind of designs or protos or partly implementations, it's essential that you really iterate those based on feedback. So you, you test those, you try them out, you learn what really works well, what does not work yet, you may even find new, new things. So here I um, would like to mention also that uh, there, there has been some studies done that you will find major usability issues if you just ask a few people. So you do not need to organize a big usability test with 30 people, 40 people. If you just ask your friend, your colleague, hey, have a look to this, check it out, what do you think about that? You will find already a lot of stuff justifying actually your designs, your decisions, but also you will get some criticism which will help you to make a better product. So we had, for instance, this, this case that uh, on events we have a switcher which allows you to switch from one SIM to the other one for active calls and messages. And we started with like a, some kind of slider, but then we got feedback that really people didn't just get it. Which of my SIM cards is now really in use? Is it now the one which is here in white or is it where their bubble is and, and all that? And, and then we started to iterate that we started to use the silica components itself, but then we, we understood that it doesn't work. It's not clear enough either. So we, we had to do a bigger change. And therefore, we ended up in showing a SIM card icon, the name of the SIM, and then really clearly show with a green line that this particular SIM card is now actually selected. And, and So over time, actually, well, we have been then covering all these use cases, covering those objectives, solve more of the issues. And I always like to actually pin the stuff to the wall because by that I get also an overview of the work. I see also dependencies or I see similar things. So instead of just having it tiny on a, on a screen, I really use the big, big wall. So now just to give you an idea what has been actually updated is that we updated the boot up flow, uh, the pin queries there, log screen, status area, settings app, we added a new option for the SIM cards. Then also we updated mobile data, phone and messaging settings, phone applications, there we modified call history, dialer, incoming call, call handling views, messages app also got changes, people app got changes, events as you see here connect to internet, system dialogue also, we modified that one. Also from the browser you can initiate a call, therefore we had to change that too, and I guess there are even more. So you see that maybe at the beginning you think that multi-SIM is just, yeah, should just work, <laughs> invisible. Yes, this is how it should be for the user, but it's actually a huge design and implementation task. So in order to do really awesome designs, a uh, couple of tricks. So, as I said, please define targets, objectives. Be clear with your key use cases. What are your key use cases? This normally helps you a lot to speed up your development work. Use the silica components. By that, it's easier for the user really to, to use your, your app because he can apply learnings from other areas in the UI. Also then you will get um, or you will benefit from updates to the components. Think from the user point of view. Do a couple of alternatives. It's really cheap at this level to think about alternatives, check those. So it's, it's much, much cheaper to do this than at, at the design stage compared to being implemented and you have to re-implement a bigger chunk of the, of the code again evaluate and, and iterate quickly based on the feedback. Think also about corner cases and possible errors. Unfortunately, users will face those too. And then get the performance always up. Uh, there's nothing worse than a black screen and you have to wait in front of it. 
and then pay attention to layouts, graphics. So we have a couple of platform margins which you should use and at least do an app icon. And then really push, push yourself, be creative and have a lot of fun. All right, thank you.